Okay, in this video, I want to talk about the relationship between velocity and distance traveled and area. Okay, so let's say we're in a car and we drive 40 miles per hour for one half hour, and then we drive 30 miles per hour for one hour, and then we drive 20 miles per hour for two hours, and the question is, how far did we drive? And so this is very easy to calculate. In the first, uh, four, in the first half hour, we drove 40 miles an hour for a half hour, so we drove 20 miles. So I'm going to write that 20 as 40 times one half, 40 miles per hour times one half hour is, uh, is 20 miles. And then we drove 30 miles per hour for one hour, so we drove 30 miles, and I'm going to write that as 30 times one. And then we drove 20 miles per hour for two hours, and so I'm gonna, we drove 40 miles in that time, so I'm going to write that as 20 times two, 20 miles per hour times two hours. Let me write parentheses here so it's a little bit clearer where the multiplication is happening. And so in total, when we are trying to calculate the total distance we travel, we just add those things up, right? So this is uh, 20 plus 30 plus 40, so I guess this is 90 miles total. Notice what I'm using here is that velocity is distance over time. And if I rewrite this equation by multiplying by time, this is exactly the same equation as velocity times time equals distance. And so actually, this is the equation that I'm using here, right? Velocity times time, velocity times time, velocity times time. And each one gives me the total distance. So this is how we go from velocity to distance traveled, is we sort of multiply by the time here. Um, what, what's the relationship to area? So let me graph a, a, a graph of our velocity on this trip, okay? So if I'm, if I'm going to graph this thing here, so let's do, the scale is like this. This is 10, 20, 30, 40. This is gonna be my velocity with respect to time. So this is my velocity with respect to time. So this axis is velocity. This axis is time. And let's go one, two, three, four hours. And so the first half hour of my journey, I drove 40 miles per hour. And so from time zero until time one half, my velocity was like this. From time from a half an hour in for the next hour, I drove for 30 miles an hour. So, oops, sorry, I only drove for half an hour at 40 miles per hour. So from time t is zero to time t is one half, I drove 40. From time t is one half to time t is one and a half, I drove 30 miles an hour. And then for the next two hours, I drove 20 miles an hour. So from time uh, one and a half to time three and a half here, I drove 20 miles per hour. And so my velocity function looks like this. And if you notice here, it kind of looks like uh, rectangles here. So I'm going to fill in these sort of imaginary lines here, like this. And if I fill in these imaginary lines here, what you notice is that the area of this rectangle is the height times the base, right? So it's 40 times 1 half. 40 times 1 half. The area of this rectangle is 30 times 1, and the area of this rectangle is 20 times 2. And so these areas of these rectangles are telling me exactly the, the distance that I traveled, right? So the, the distance that I traveled in the first half hour is this is the area under this rectangle. The distance that I traveled in, in the next hour is the area of this rectangle. And the total distance traveled is the sum of these areas, right? And now think about why this makes sense. If I'm traveling at a constant velocity, the height is the velocity, so that's, that's the velocity, and the base is the amount of time that I travel. The, this axis is measuring time. And so if I travel at a constant velocity, I'm going to get a rectangle, and the area of that rectangle is exactly going to be the velocity times the time. And so this is exactly going to measure my distance. Now you can 